them saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be what? Feel. Feel. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Mm -hmm. Now I grouped all those together because um, Jesus was talking here about happiness. A child of God, and that word blessed means a child of God, it means to be happy. A child of God needs to have inward happiness. Yes. And an inward happiness that is generated uh, by the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit of God. Yes. Um, one of the, the, the fruits of the Spirit is love, and is peace, and is joy. Amen? And, and, and he's saying that those that have that inner peace, that inner happiness, are poor in spirit. They see themselves in need. And he's saying that those that are happy, they, they, they mourn uh, uh, for uh, the, uh, their own sins and the sins of others. They pray, they seek God, so that other people can be happy. Mm -hmm. Amen? He says, blessed are the meek, uh, those that uh, submit themselves to the word of God. That's what that word meek means, to be submissive to God's word. And if you're submissive to God's word, he said, then ye shall inherit the earth. And meaning the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. Meaning that if you submit yourself to God, you don't have to go after things like the world goes after things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all those other things that you desire shall be given unto you when your obedience is fulfilled. Yes. Amen? So he says, Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Happy is the individual. When you've been changed, born again, you should have a hunger and thirst for the Lord. You should have a hunger and thirst. Now here it says, Righteousness. You should seek to do what's right at all times. Amen. You should you should want to do what's right uh, at all times. That hunger, notice hunger and thirst, an inward desire. It's an inward desire, an inward desire, and 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 to do what's right at all times. You gotta you gotta want to do what's right at all times. I'm moving quickly here because I want to. Get down to something else. When he says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And when he's saying the child of God should, should want to show mercy to, to those that uh, have done you wrong and done you harm. You should seek and desire to show mercy when it's in your power uh, to put them away. Amen? Uh, the Bible tells us, gee, uh, and that our Father prayed, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy what? Thy kingdom come, thy what? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our what? Daily bread. Forgive us, forgive me of my trespasses as I forgive others uh, of their trespasses. Amen? And, and that's what this mercy is about. Uh, blessed are the merciful, for they shall do what? Obtain mercy. If you're not merciful, you won't uh, receive mercy. Notice then, blessed are the pure in heart, those that have a right motive. That's what he's talking about. Uh, because our heart generally is, is, is not generally, it is, is deceitful <laughs> and desperately wicked. And then we need a trainer for our heart. Uh, and the Lord trains us how to think. Amen? So we have to have pure motives. Pure motives. Why are you uh, doing what you're doing? Why are you saying what you're saying? Is it uh, to be seen of men or 
to glorify God. Amen. And that what you know, everything goes back to know. Like in the world, everything goes back to the bottom line. What's the dollar about? With God, everything goes back to what's your motive. Amen? And, and you have to have the right motive. God will hold up all the program <laughs> until you get the right motive. He'll hold up, let me say this way. God will hold up all your blessings uh, until your heart is right. Then he'll bless you. Uh, no matter how much you uh, uh, sacrifice, no matter what you do, or no matter what you say, if God judges the heart, man looks on the outward appearance, but God judges the heart. Amen? Amen. Uh, God want to know is your heart right. <laughs> All right? Then it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Uh, when one reconciles their, their selves unto the Lord, they walk in peace, and they want to live in peace. And they don't want to quarrel and argue with folk. Uh, 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 like I said, uh, there's a time of peace and there's a time of war. Amen? And those are two different things. But in general, in living your life, you're pursuing after peace. Amen? In other words, uh, you shouldn't be arguing and fighting with everybody that you come across, uh, come across your path. Amen? And people ask you a question. You chew them up and eat them up, spit them out. <laughs> Hard to be approached. Uh, that's what he's talking about. Hard to be approached. Thank you, Lord. He wants you should be seek after peace and pursue peace. Follow peace with all men and what? Holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Notice, he says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Why? Because you are, God is a God of peace. He wants to see people in peace. Amen? Amen. So here we go. Um, now we get down to where I really want to be. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Uh, verse number 10, 5 and 10. He says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs uh, is the kingdom of heaven. And this persecution means that you are going through uh, uh, both, both spiritually and naturally. There's a two-level fold of persecution here <coughs> that we experience. We experience persecution on a physical level, and we experience persecution on a spiritual level. Uh -huh. So he says here, blessed are, are they, happy are they which are persecuted for what purpose? Uh, for what you've done. Uh, and, 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 you can't, and when, when there's retaliation from that, you can't say uh, this retaliation, uh, uh, I'm blessed because I'm being persecuted for the right things I've done. Uh, what sort of man saw it, that's really what? Also, there's a reaping uh, that must happen to those that do wrong. Uh, and, and God is the avenger and the judge. Amen? Hallelujah. But for those that are keeping his commandments, those that are walking in his ways, because Jesus suffered, you also are going to suffer persecution. Amen? Uh, if they hated Jesus, they also going to hate you. Uh, and, and your good at times are going to be evil spoken of. Because not everybody is going to appreciate the good that you do. Why? Because it exposes their deeds, and their deeds are evil. Huh? So he says, he says, blessed, uh, uh, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, if you're being persecuted for doing right, uh, living according to the word of God, doing things that God has ordained for you to do. Be led of the Spirit of God. Not, not, not in carnality, but be led of the Spirit of God. He says, uh, the kingdom of heaven belongs to you. Then he says, uh, blessed are ye that men shall revile you. <laughs> Thank God. And that's, that, that reviling, it really means chew you up and spit you out, tell you all. Tell you all, 
God. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Because even Paul said that these light afflictions, where we're going to down here, are just up for a moment. Notice we said they work in for us, uh, a far more exceeding in the eternal way of glory. Uh, uh, that's what you got to focus on. Not focus on the pain, not focus on what the individual has said, not, not focus on what they're saying, but focus on your reward. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Now notice, notice what he said. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Now, 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 now persecution is a new. Uh, hey, I'm uh, 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 killing the saints. <laughs> they ain't gonna talk about the saints. That ain't new. They talked about Jesus, didn't they? Uh, they persecuted Jesus, didn't they? Uh, yeah, but, but Jesus, when he was being persecuted, he was persecuted for righteousness sake, wasn't he? Yeah. And he knew that he was about to go to the cross to be persecuted. And he prayed. He said, Father, glorify thy son with the glory that I had with thee. Amen? When we are being persecuted, we should pray. Yeah. Uh, Lord, glorify me. Uh, uh, glorify me uh, with the glory that I had with thee before the world began. Uh, we should be praying to see how we go. Hallelujah, my God. And we should, we should rejoice and give thanks. Hallelujah, uh, because it's the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Rejoice. Hey, go. Now notice we said, uh, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And, and if you read the scriptures, the prophets, uh, they, they, they suffered. Amen. They suffered some things. They, they, they had to stand up uh, for righteousness before the king. And uh, 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 sometimes the king wasn't doing what was right. But they had to tell them what God has said. And sometimes they get thrown in jail. Sometimes they get killed for standing up. Uh, John the Baptist, he was the last New Testament, uh, uh, Old Testament prophet. The last Old Testament. Anybody ask you a question about who was the last Old Testament prophet? You tell them John the Baptist. Amen. And he was the last Old Testament uh, uh, prophet. And what was his end? He was beheaded for standing up for righteousness. Uh, and what was Jesus' testimony concerning John the Baptist? He said there was that way uh, than John the Baptist. Hallelujah. Uh, my God, you follow what I'm saying? Uh, when you stand up for righteousness, you've got to expect persecution and, and great is your reward in heaven. Hallelujah. And the Lord will testify of thee. Hallelujah. The first martyr of uh, Stephen, uh, he was stoned to death uh, because he stood up. He told them about Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> and, and, and when he was stoned to death, he began to pray. Uh, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Uh, when you're going through, you have to increase your prayer. Uh, set your mind on the Lord. Pray. Uh, and, 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 and not just pray anything, but pray that Lord will give you a revelation. Uh, because when Stephen was praying and seeking after God, the Bible says the heavens opened. Uh, and he saw Jesus standing up at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and, and Stephen didn't accuse his accusers. He said, Father, forgive them. Uh, for they know not what they do. Hallelujah, my God. We got to pray for them. Uh, we got to pray for ourselves. Holy God. Amen. That, 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 that we got to allow testing trials to, to sway us from, from living home. Yeah. To sway us from living right. All right. Amen. Uh, fire reveals what's in you. All right. Uh, uh, now, if, when the fire comes, if righteousness is in you, that's what you're going to show. All right. But if, if righteousness is not in you, that's what you're going to oh, show. Oh, uh, oh, hallelujah. Now, the fire reveals what's in you. Amen. Amen. There you go. Now, notice. He said, For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. 
Now, 5 and 13, notice then, he's, he's moving uh, in, in conjunction with what he's already said. Because he's saying, talking about a changed individual. A person that, 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 that has newness. A person that is walking after righteousness. Notice, he said, ye are the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. The salt represents influence. Amen? It represents influence. Mm -hmm. You, we, if we've been changed, we represent the influence of God. Amen? Amen. Among the people. Amen? Amen? We represent the influence of God among the people. Notice what he said. He said, ye are the salt of the earth. Huh? But if the salt has uh, lost his savior, if the salt has lost its influence, amen, your influence is everything. Yes, your testimony is everything. Uh, people may not uh, remember your name, but they'll remember your testimony. Uh, uh, and your testimony has to line up with righteousness. Uh, has to line up with holiness. If it does not, then what you say will have no
We are the understanding of God. Right. What do you mean by that? that? That a lot of people don't read their Bible, but you are to be a living epistle, oh, no. to be read of all men. Yes. By your conversation and by your deeds, yes. people should know that you are following the Bible. Oh, and that, that you are a living body, a living, breathing body. Yeah. <laughs> 
Amen? So, so Jesus is getting to the nitty gritty of a person's actions. Amen? And your, your, your inner being determines your actions. Amen? Uh, God judges your inner being. Hey, Lord. Now notice, he said, verse 17, 5 and 17. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the promise. I come not to destroy, but to do what? But to fulfill. So Jesus is, is teaching them now. He's about to, he's about to really break open some, some, some truths that they needed to hear. And so he starts out very subtle. He says, think not that I have come to destroy the law. Here, he's not talking about the Ten Commandments. He's talking about the Pentateuch, the, the first five books of the Bible. He's talking about Exodus, Genesis, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy.
Notice St. John chapter number 1, verse number 1, it says, In the beginning was the what? The word. Was the Word. And the Word was what? With God. With God and the Word was what? God. Was God. The same was in the beginning what? With God. With God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything that was made. Notice, in Christ, He came to fulfill. He said, verse number 4, in him was light, and the light was the what? Light of men, the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding uh, of salvation. That's what Jesus came to fulfill, to give people perfect wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. No sin. And the light does what? Shine. And that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to shine in darkness. Amen? He said, let your light what? Shine before men that they may see your good works and do what? Glory by huh? Jesus, he came on the scene to glory by to fulfill his mission. Am I right? No. He said, uh, and the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness didn't understand. Comprehend it now. The same, uh, there was a man sent from God and God. Come to bear, okay, verse number seven. The same uh, came for a witness to bear witness of who? The light. The light. That's us. Like right John the Baptist. We come on the scene to bear witness to who? The light. Amen. And who's that light? Jesus. Jesus. All right. And the word was made flesh, here we are, and dwelt among us. 
17. John 1, 17. He says, for the law was, was given by Moses. Moses gave them the law. The Pentateuch. Mm -hmm. The first five books of the Bible. But who did grace and truth come by? Jesus Christ. Jesus, that's why he came to, he came to give definition of, of those first five books of the Bible. Huh? He came to give definition huh? of, of the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Amen. Ah, 
And how do you know that he will fulfill it? On the day of Pentecost, Jesus stole him before him. It's, it's needful that I go away. Didn't he say that? Yes. Uh, 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 because if I don't go away, what came out? The covenant came out. Yes. Amen? Uh, so, so that gives you an indication to let you know that Jesus made his destination because of the day of Pentecost. Oh, God. Uh, the Holy Ghost came. Oh, God. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and when you truly repent, uh, the Holy Ghost came. Hallelujah. And that, that lets you know that, that what Jesus said is true. Uh, that he reached his destination. Uh, that he sat down at the right hand of the majesty of God. Uh, and I didn't finish reading that, but he sat down with an expectation. Amen. To, to the enemy. Be made his So you start 
less than your food. Then that adds a little level. Huh? In that one point, you stop reverencing God. Right? And God doesn't pour clothes on you. So you think, oh, let me try something else I can do. Then you say, oh, let me try something else I can do. You're not going to chew it on. They, they know you're going wrong, they look at that and ask you. See how far they can get. Huh? That's what we do when we don't pay attention to the Word of God. We look and see what we can get away with. Huh? And, and, and that which I think is no harm, it all started out with me saying, I don't want to be really afraid about you. Next thing you know, I'm way over here in left field, doing stuff I know I shouldn't be doing. Hmm? You with me? Yes. All right, now notice. You gotta pay attention to it all. <laughs> Look, who said that that person uh, break one of the least of the commandments? I wonder which, what is the least mm. of the commandments? <laughs> Hallelujah. And so teach men so. Now see, when you break it, And teach men so, 
He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be what? Called what? Great. Great in the kingdom of heaven. Amen? You got to do it. Yes. Uh, then you got to you gotta, you gotta teach others. All right. That's what's called discipleship. Yeah. <clears throat> Amen? Yeah. Uh, you should be putting this in to, to somebody else. That need. Let your life shine. Amen? Uh, don't, don't doubt all that wisdom and knowledge God has given you. Don't doubt uh, all that wisdom and knowledge that God has given you and you not share it with somebody else. Testimony of God. You gotta share the testimony. Amen? You gotta pour into somebody. Am I right? And, and what Jesus is after here is the, 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 the children, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were born into uh, other people, but he said, you made them a two-born child of hell. Huh? You don't want to pour into people your bitterness, your, your evil deeds, your wickedness. Amen? You don't want to corrupt people. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Uh, you want to put in them righteousness. Huh? Uh, 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 wisdom from God. What God has done for you. Amen? Uh, it's amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, amen. You got you to gotta fix somebody. Amen? Yeah. Put them under your wing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, but, but let me say this. Let me say this. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the tongue. Uh, he said, he said, like he told Peter, he said, the devil has desired to sit to his week, Peter. He said, but I pray for you. That your faith do what? Fail not. Here we go. He said, when thou art converted, <laughs> uh, do what? Spend it out of uh, Take somebody up your when you are converted. Uh, so you can spend them. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, go ahead, Steve. 20. 20. 20, yes, thank you. All right, note, he says, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness <laughs> shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, <laughs> you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And basically, in a nutshell, because I want to get down to his anchor thing, uh, Jesus was selling them the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, their righteousness only extended onto an outward uh, expression. They only went through the motions. Amen? But inwardly, they didn't mean it. Inwardly, their heart was right. Have you ever sat down and said, Lord, why am I doing what I'm doing? Am I doing it for the right reason? Huh? Oh, uh, you gotta do stuff for the right reasons. Amen? Uh, the right motive, the right purpose. Uh, and Jesus was saying the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they didn't have the right purpose. They didn't have the right motive. They were more driven by, 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 by their own inner desires that were evil. You follow? Mm -hmm. So that's why it goes into uh, verse 5 and 21. He said, he have heard that it was said of old time that thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Now note, he said, you have heard that it was said of them of old time. So Jesus is saying, what am I about to tell you? You've heard this before. You're not new. To, 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 this is actually the sixth commandment. You're not new to the sixth commandment. Huh? Huh? I'm not telling you anything fresh. You've heard it before. So therefore, you should have an understanding of it. You should be living it. Huh? Notice him. He said, you, you've heard 
that have said of them of all time, Moses and the prophets, that thou shalt not kill the sixth commandment, and whosoever shall kill, shall kill, shall be in danger of the judgment. They heard that. that uh, it was an eye for an eye and a two for a two thing. Man, whoever killed had the right to kill the other person. God, I tell you, God believes in capital punishment. Anybody ask you, God believes in capital punishment? You say, ooh, huh? Yes, God believes in capital punishment. All right, now here we go. But, 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 see, the Holy Ghost is good. God also believes in showing mercy, having grace. Amen? Yeah. Showing forgiveness. God believes in that. Yes. Hallelujah. All right. Here we go. Shall be in danger of the de judgment? The judgment is death. That's the judgment. No, that's key to what, what this next verse is saying. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of of death, the judgment. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. The key is anger is an emotion that we all have. And you need anger. Amen? That's why I gave it to you. You can't, you can't get rid of anger as an emotion. It's going to be there. Huh? You with me? Notice what he says. Look at the semantics of this statement. He said, uh, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Now you can be angry with your brother, but you gotta have a good reason, a good cause to be angry with the individual. Huh? To be upset, to be angry. No, she didn't say wrath. He didn't say malice. Huh? The Bible says, be angry, but what? Sin not. So you can't harbor that anger and let it turn into something else Amen. against your brother. Even if you do have a cause. Follow? That's key. To squeeze, stepped on my foot, kept stepping on my foot. I got to be angry with him. Stop stepping on my foot. Huh? But he never told me to harm that anger and let it build into resentment, let it build into malice. Where I go and step on her foot. Hmm? Where I let it build up in me and turn into something else where I seek to go get revenge. Well, now, with Jesus is teaching here, he's saying that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, if you got a, if you got a legitimate reason to be angry with your brother or your sister, nothing wrong with it. All right? And he says, but if you don't have a legitimate reason, you're in danger of the judgment. If you are angry with them because somebody else is angry with them, that's not a good reason. <laughs> huh? That's not a good reason. No. If you're angry with them just because they ain't dressed the way you want them to dress, or talking like you want them to talk, that's not a good reason. All right? But people are like that.
Fellowship, <coughs> pride, and judging other people. And it literally is equivalent to cussing. You know when you cuss at somebody? Now, we say, I want you to go, go around cussing. Well, but cuss words are just words if you just say them. It's your intent. Come on. Uh, it's how you put it together. What's your purpose for saying that word? Why are you calling that individual? Mm -hmm. uh, and note, generally when you're calling an individual that, you're doing it from an emotion, mm -hmm. from within. Mm -hmm. That is evil. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus is after. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to walk with him, you've got to be pure in heart. Yes. Blessed are the pure in heart. You can't be, even, even, even if you just call him an uh, empty fellow, or here, call him, uh, or, or uh, whatsoever say, so say this brother down, fool. Jesus called people, he said, thou fool, slow heart. But he called them that to bring attention to their actions. Follow? The Bible uh, calls people fools. Fool have said in this life that there is no God. That brings attention to the person's action. Paul in the scripture, he calls uh, a person a fool. Oh, foolish Galatians, who have been uh, No, he's bringing attention to their actions. But what Jesus is talking about when he calls a person a fool, you're speaking of their, of their character, of who they are. And you mean it in a derogatory way, negativity. Now, look at I'm acting out the scriptures. I'm really going to do it. I'm going to do See, so you don't want to go low. You like the shallow bottom. When they go low, you go high. What's your motive? What's your intent for calling them a fool? You follow? It's the inner motion. Now, what Jesus is teaching here, and he says, and he, he specifically picked that the, the sixth verse, uh, uh, the sixth commandment of murder. He says, when you do that, when you talk down on people, uh, when you when you call them out their name, that's the same as murdering them. The same. And 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 when you do that, he said, then you are putting yourself in the same judgment as a person who shot somebody on the street. Do we believe him? Yes. That's what he said. You're endangering yourself. You're endangering. Hmm? That's why it's good. I'm going to be honest with you. When, when, because you're having souls. When evil thoughts come to our mind, we've got to train our mind to reject it. Don't think on those things. Huh? Because if you think on it long enough, you're going to find an opportunity to carry it out. Your thoughts is what brings your actions. <coughs> your inner emotions, your inner desire. You follow? Now once again, like I said, Jesus said, oh, you all right. Any questions? Any questions? All right. Captain Priest, he says, I said, well, you you seem to always quit on time. <laughs> and he said, he said, what's your secret? Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 
So any questions on that Bible set? All right, well, we certainly thank God for you coming out on tonight and being with us. Truly, God is, is great, and he's greatly to be praised. And I certainly praise God for his, his grace, his mercy, that he's shown to us. Uh, we certainly want to pray for the saints, and we thank God for all.